On this episode, we spend our first night on the hook in the Bahamas as we visit the Barry Islands and we'll do a full Anchorage review. But first, we pick up where we left off last episode with our trip almost ending before it got started. What happened this morning? Dad was trying to get out and mom could not get on the rope untied. Dad backed up and we almost hit the boat next to us like an inch away. He backed up more and we almost hit another boat. He speeded up and then didn't hit any boat. So big game marina, lots of current, and the wind was going the same direction as the current. And about 30 boats from Fort Lauderdale were coming in for a fishing tournament. A lot of mega yachts coming in and trying to get a 25 foot wide catamaran out of a tight docking space. A little sketch this morning. We probably did it wrong. So next time we'll do it a different way with a fender and, and kind of hold our, our stern in and swing our bow around. It's all a learning process, but a uh, little sketch this morning, lots of adrenaline, shaking hands. Now we're at the Bahamas Bank, uh, crossing over from Bimini to the Berry Islands to stay for three or four days of exploration. This is where I'm supposed to say, so we sold everything, ditched the nine to five, traded our Labrador for a life jacket, and sailed off into the sunset. Turns out we're kind of attached to our Labrador and our doodle, and yes, even this temperamental poodle. Join us on this journey as we navigate our version of the American dream and maybe inspire you to chase yours. Having checked in and cleared customs in Bimini, it was time for our first true anchorage. After a harrowing morning dealing with the current and traffic at the Big Game Marina, we set sail for the 100-mile journey for the Barry Islands. The winds had shifted overnight from the west, so we needed an anchorage with westerly protection. We also needed fuel. So we made our way into Great Harbor Key. Turns out the current is a little tricky here too. Let's try that again. The stop was convenient. The fuel prices were fair. The marina nearby was tempting, but we wanted something a bit more secluded. So we headed through the incredibly narrow cut at Great Harbor as we made our way around the top of the berries, a little cruise ship stop known as Coco Cay. We were headed here, a large moon-shaped area on the opposite side of the island from the marina. We'll get into more of the anchorage details in a moment, but first priority. What's up guys? Gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> Yogi, are you done? You don't need to do anything else. Roxy, stay here. Come here. Don't go down there. Don't go down there. Back on the boat, the inevitable awaited. A ritual soon to be a familiar part of our days. Done? No, there's still like salt all in her. Salt? Or like sand or something. I don't know. Don't you feel it? What is it, Ivy? As the dogs settled in, we all did our assigned chores. See it, Yogi? Dolphins. We made it to our first official anchorage. We are at, where are we at? Oh, we are at the beach club. So it's kind of this harbor uh, moon shape. So the wind was coming from the west and we needed some western protection. Uh, and it looks pretty good. It's tandy bottom, so the anchor really stuck hard. So we're good. We're at our first anchorage for this trip. And we decided to have what we call fancy steak dinner. Broccoli and all the sides. And of course, fancy steak dinner, you gotta have fancy steak. Karen's down in the cabin. She's monitoring the corn and the green bean, but mainly when I say she's monitoring it, she's making sure that our dogs do not eat that food. Of course, any chef knows, not that I'm a chef, but any chef knows that to cook a good steak, it's one turn. Yogi, being bad. On our boat, dinner is family time, dogs included. Some might not agree with feeding dogs table scraps, but for us, it's part of being a family. I got it. Family dinners are important. They keep us close. They keep us talking, which is good for everyone. Good morning. 
Our first night at the Anchorage was a success. A few passing storms, a bit of roll, but we all slept well. Choosing where to anchor may be the most important thing you do as a liveaboard cruiser. That's why we're excited to introduce this new feature to our videos. Three Dog, Five Paw, Anchorage Review. We're looking at safety and shelter. Does this spot keep our family safe from the wind and weather? How secure do we feel? Scenic beauty. We're talking clear waters and amazing sunsets. Pet friendliness. Can the pups stretch their legs? Amenities and provisions. Is it easy to grab groceries or a cold drink? And finally, the adventure factor. We explore what each spot has to offer, be it snorkeling, hiking, or a secret spot that's a must see. Each category can earn up to five paws, giving us a total score out of 25 for the perfect anchorage. For our first anchorage review, it's the Beach Club Anchorage at Great Harbor Key in the Barry Islands. We'll start with safety and shelter. The approach to this anchorage was a piece of cake. Just follow the magenta line on your charts and keep your head up for a few bombies as you enter from the north. You can anchor just about anywhere. It's nearly all sand bottom. In our three and a half foot draft, the depths were good almost to shore. With wind from the west, this anchorage offered great protection. We'll rate the Beach Club Anchorage four paws for safety and shelter, deducting one paw as the anchorage could get a bit rolly when wind shifted east, more annoying than uncomfortable. Now let's talk scenic beauty. The Barry Islands are truly a slice of paradise. Located between the Abacos Islands to the north with its quaint towns, Nassau just to the south, and well, you know what's there, and of course the Exumas further south, it's easy to overlook the berries. Don't, it's a treasure of rustic beauty. We give the Beach Club Anchorage four paws out of five, deducting just one paw because there were some houses on the shoreline that for some could detract from the scenic beauty. Let's dive into pet friendliness. Our pups had a blast at this anchorage. The water was calm with very little current, making it incredibly easy to just dive off the back of the boat for a swim. <laughs> Good. The beach was massive, over two miles from end to end in this half moon bay. Never again. Never again. You said never again and you just picked it up. Yeah. There were never more than three or four boats in this anchorage and a few houses that seemed to be vacation rentals. So we'd pass the occasional human as we walked the beach, but they were always friendly and nice to the pups. Our family debated this one. But ultimately, the Beach Club oh, Anchorage gets five stars from our family for pet friendliness. Nope, 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 nope. You don't get no water now. Our only issue was Roxy would occasionally try to wander off to visit the houses along the beach. But that's a her thing, not a here thing. When it comes to amenities and provisions, this anchorage is early in our travels, so we didn't have much of a need for civilization. This anchorage is certainly off the beaten path, partly why we loved it. But as the name implies, the Beach Club restaurant is able to be walked to from the beach. They have wings, burgers, and all the stuff. There's also a marina that's a 25 minute walk to the opposite side of Great Harbor with a small town that includes a small grocery store and hardware store. We'll give this anchorage three paws for amenities and provisions, but feel free to disagree in the comments. We saved the best for last. The Adventure Factor. But what we quickly found out, weather is a huge part of the adventure equation. The outdoor adventures would have to wait. 
So we did our best to find adventure on the boat. We had several rainy days, but there were still plenty of gaps that allowed us to get out and play. Watch out, Roxy, there's a rope there, buddy. <laughs> Rain or shine, trips to the beach are always a part of the adventure for our family. didn't seem to mind the cloudy days. In fact, I think they may have preferred them. Ooh, that's, that's kind of cold. Yeah. And every so often, the sun would peek out from behind the clouds and give us a glimpse of those turquoise waters. Life on a boat teaches you to adapt. With a crew of recovering type A's, making the most of changes in plans has become a key part of the journey. No start. Let's do it. When the wind settled, this large bay was nearly as calm as a lake. And what do you do on lakes? After a day packed with adventure, there's nothing like unwinding with my perfected version of a rum punch. The recipe's in the comments, let me know if you give it a try. As avid YouTube sailing channel viewers, we knew there was one must-do adventure that tops every visitor's list in the berries, the Blue Hole. The plan was to move to a new anchorage 10 miles away, so we'd have a short dinghy ride to shore for this adventure. The weather still didn't want to cooperate, but remember we're recovering type A's, and as former type A's, we thought we'll just push through it. What happened? Ran us into a sandbar. We're stuck, <laughs> waiting for high tide. Cheers. The Navionic chart definitely was wrong. Explorer charts were wrong too. They both seem to be wrong. I don't know, we're coming in at low tide, which was a dumb move in and of itself. But the good news is since we're at low tide, we can wait for the tide to come up a little bit, get off the sandbar and continue on. Now you gotta do the bridle. This isn't the anchorage we intended to go to, but with the clouds and the inability to see changing depths, this seemed like a good alternative. Good job, Karen. So there is a nasty storm coming in. It's shallow, there's terrible light. And so we've decided we're gonna anchor here, uh, maybe for the night, maybe for a couple hours. We're just kind of figure it out and wait and see, but just better to be safe than sorry. Correct? Mm -hmm. Not what we had planned today. The only negative was a three mile dinghy ride and some squally weather. But remember, we're type A. Wait, they said they got lost? The two past? Oh, hi. So after a rocky morning, we're doing our hike to the, what are we doing our hike to? Blue hole. <laughs> to the blue hole. Rough dinghy ride over from where we anchored. It's wet and rainy and a few bugs out biting, but I'm making the hike back now. Karen just said she's following Yogi, so I'm not sure we're on the right path. They're getting in her skin. The bugs? Yes. Uh, Where do you jump? Um, Three. I can't do it, guys. 
candy. I'm proud of you, girl. <laughs> I've seen probably 20 videos showing this place and it's definitely one of those places that the uh, pictures don't do it justice. A really pretty place with the rock, the uh, water, and we don't even have full sun today. We're not getting a lot of colors, but uh, even then it's still a really pretty place. Started drowning. <laughs> Trying to. The day was coming to a close, and with the weather still unsettled, it was time to get back to the boat. Wait, <laughs> wait, buddy. Yogi seemed to have an extra sense of urgency. Oh, going fast. I don't have video of what came next. As we arrived back at the beach, our dinghy had been pounding in the surf. We all boarded, five humans, three big dogs. We began the trek back to our boat, but soon the engine cut out. The water was rough, water spout still visible. I primed the engine, it started, we moved, it died. We repeated this process until it would not start. Despite being relatively close to shore, our efforts to paddle to shore made little difference in the choppy water. And so there we were, five humans, three dogs, as the sun began to set. Karen thought we'd be dragged out to sea. I thought more likely we'd end up at one of the near uninhabited islands and spend the night with mosquitoes hoping to flag down help in the morning. And this amazing adventure would end up too much pain for too little gain. And my family's love of cruising would end before it even got started. We made some calls for help and we got a response. He'd be right there. As I felt some relief, I was able to think more clearly. A simple connector from the gas tank to the fuel line had come undone. We managed to get the engine started just as help arrived. I share this story because if you want five paw adventures, be prepared for some five paw challenges too. We learned a lot about preparation, staying calm, planning for such events before they happen. We'll do better next time. And there will be a next time. We give this anchorage five paws for adventure. Adding that to the four paws for safety and shelter, four paws for scenic beauty, five paws for pet friendliness, and three paws for provision. We have a total score of 21 out of 25 for the Beach Club Anchorage. Be sure not to miss an episode by hitting that subscribe button. And we love comments, so please share any encouragement or similar challenges you've experienced. And to my fellow recovering type A's, challenges are inevitable. How we grow from them is optional. Slow down. Embrace the ebb and the flow. The challenges and the adventures. The sun and the rain. Until next time. One day they're going to get smart enough to gang up on Yogi.